extremely important. It's part of the reason why I had us listen to the whole passage first before we went into it. In fact, in Romans 10, 17, it says that faith comes by listening, by hearing the word of God. I mean, I can tell you all sorts of things, but when you hear the word of God yourself and you hear what Christ is saying, that's enough. Okay? I'm here to expound on it, to explain it to you, to give you the context of it, really kind of get at the message. But the Holy Spirit is the one doing the work. He's the one doing the calling. And like the sheep, we have to listen to his voice. And what Christ is telling these false leaders, he's saying, you guys don't get it. You're not hearing. It's because you're not my sheep. If you were my sheep, you would hear it. You would get it. And, and so what's this, what's this great message that they need to hear? What's so important about it? If you go back a few verses between verse 14 and verse 18, there's, it's kind of like the heart of really this passage of what Christ is trying to say. Along with saying that they need to listen, that the, good, the sheep listen to the voice and they listen to the shepherd, he speaks of himself something extremely important. He says that the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And as I've told you already, these shepherds were tough guys. They were willing to lay down their life for the sheep. But typically, if a shepherd were willing to fight for a sheep, he's expecting to come out of it alive, okay? I mean, he's, you know, you got to think practical here. But that's not the way Christ talks about it. If you look all the way back, verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd, in verse 11. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That's kind of like a definitive t- statement. He's saying, I lay down my life for the sheep, period. A little bit later on, he says, but I also have the power and the authority from the Father to take it up again. He's talking about the resurrection. See, these leaders, they're looking for somebody like the Maccabees. They want somebody to overthrow the kingdom. Give us a real leader. Give us a real shepherd. He's saying, I am the real shepherd. I'm the one you've been waiting for. But I'm a little different because when I lay down my life for the sheep, I mean it. And I have the authority to take it up again because I and the Father are one. It's an absolutely incredible statement. It's a statement of good news. Amen? That when he lays down his life, he lays it down for us to give them life to the fullest, to give them eternal life. So, so we've kind of gone through all this. We've noticed the fact that listening is important. So I just have this one question for you is, who are you listening to? Are you listening to the thief and the robber? Because I'm going to guarantee you that they're going to try to mimic the sound of the shepherd if they're smart, right? They're going to try to mimic the sound. And throughout history, we've had a multitude of false shepherds. Even in his time, right before Christ's time, they had had a multitude of guys who said, I'm the Messiah, but they weren't the true shepherd. Even in our time, we've had people who bring false messages. All you have to do is turn on the TV. You turn on the TV, you watch Oprah. She's talking about how you're God and you can make your own decisions and you're the one that's in charge. All over society, we hear false what? False shepherds and false messages. And it, and it doesn't change. You know, it, and it doesn't just have to be as far as watching it on TV, even the people that are close to us. There are studies out that say that young people, it's you guys, okay, that young people... They did a study saying, who's the most influential person in your life? Number one answer, you want to know what it was? Their parents. Number one answer, most influential person in their lives. But when they asked them, who do you go to advice in a time of distress, in crisis? Number one answer, not their parents. There's something wrong there. That when they are in distress and need of help, somehow they feel like they can't go to their parents. They get their guidance from somewhere else. We're no different. We are getting our messages from somewhere else. Who are we listening to? Because if we were to listen to the good shepherd, he would be taking out to good pastures. I I don't want to leave you thinking that, you know, this is just like, he's just going to lead us out to good pastures and everything's going to be all right. I already told you, it's, it's hard out there. You know it's hard out there. You're going to walk out of the, the doors, you know, this morning, and you're going to go back to life, and you're going to be like, oh, man, it's tough out here. It is tough. But what's different about the good shepherd is he is with us. He leads us. 
And when he lays down his life for us, we take comfort in that. That there'll be a time, there'll be, I, I mean, I, I read this passage and I'm telling you, I was moved. If you looked at me, verse 28, he kind of brings it home here. He says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. He's kind of making a logical argument here. If you would follow it along, he's saying, if you were my Father's hands, nobody could snatch you from it. Well, being in my hands is just like that. That's because I and the Father are one. He's making that connection. That, right after that, that's why they want to kill him. <laughs> because he's, they got it. They got it. You're saying you're God. But for us today, for us as believers, it's a message of hope. And it's a message that we can, we can affirm to. That he and the Father are one. He is God. And he has come to give us eternal life. And that is the good news. That while we go out in arid land where there's very little water and food, that he will find it for us and he will take care of us. And tomorrow, on our Mondays, when we go through the difficulties of our lives, we can remember that he has laid down his life for us. And there'll be one day, there'll be one day, well, it, it, it will be no more. There'll be one day where there will be green pastures and waters forever, for everybody. And that is message of good news. And so who are you listening to? Because that's a life-changing message. That's a message that makes the sheep joyful as it comes out of the pen, realizing the shepherd is here. As, as we go to finish this morning, as we go to pray, if you haven't heard his voice, if you haven't heard that before, I welcome you to come pray with us at the end. To come hear his voice. Hear his voice and what it says. It is the message of the good news of the Bible. It says, he lays on his life. He lays on his life for sheep, only to take it up again, to give us life, life everlasting, life to the fullest. Amen.